Yo, what's happening, friendos? Welcome back to the Tropical Garage. My name's Troy, and today we're going to be doing a frog room tour video. Um, before we get started on any of that, I do want to ask you guys to please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're not already, uh, in the previous video, we were at 69% of my views were from people that were not subscribed to me. And in this video, we are now at 68%. So we're moving in the right direction, and let's keep going that way. Um, also, yeah, just it's free and your friends shouldn't make fun of you, but they might. Um, I promise everything's going to be okay if you subscribe. Like nothing bad's going to happen to your computer or your phone or your TV or whatever you're watching me on. Um, so yeah, just subscribe. And also you can follow me on uh, Instagram at Ufraga Histrionica. I post lots of really cool macro photos of the frogs, um, progress pictures of tanks that I'm working on or tanks that I've completed really nice plants so if you're into all that stuff go follow me there and um, yeah getting into the video this is the first frog room tour um, that I've done on the channel where this garage frog garage frog room whatever you want to call it is finally completed um, so uh, without further ado I'm not gonna talk too long this is a longer video so I know you guys get annoyed and bored with me talking so uh, I'm just gonna get straight into it enjoy the video all right, before I get started on the frog room tour, I do want to apologize for the fan noise. Um, I tried to film without the fans and the tanks got too condensated. So I figured you guys would rather appreciate the clearer glass than a clearer voice or clearer audio um, because my tanks are cooler than my voice. If you disagree, you're dumb. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get started. So, we'll start over here. This is the rack that none of you guys have really seen in the frog room tour, but I have had both of these tanks in montages. Um, so we'll do the we'll do the bottom row first. And this is a 44 by 17 by 24. Um, it houses 10 Phyllobates terribilis mint and we've got some pretty cool plants in here we've got uh, philodendron el choco red I've got anthurium crystallinum and monstera silt epicana those are all kind of rare-ish orchids um, I've got a jewel orchid in Makotes patola which I was sort of on the fence about using um, just because it's not native to South America or Colombia. I'm sure some of these other plants aren't native to Colombia, but, um, you know, the, the Makotis Patola is not even from South America. So, um, I've got some other orchids in there, some Restrepia, some Pleurothallis, um, a Zootrophian, got some Microgramma, some Margravia, and Peperomia emarginella. Um, I do have a little water feature in this tank, which I'll show you guys here. You can see the water dripping there in the back into this little pond area. It's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can turn up the brightness a little bit. You can see that pond in the back, and it comes up under this log here into the front area. Let me turn the retinas back down. We've got the little water feature all along the front here. I'm also terribly sorry about my squeaky chair. Gotta whip out the old WD-40, I guess. So that's that tank, uh, which you guys, I saw, I had it on the last tour, but it wasn't completed yet. Um, there is a montage, a little three minute video to some music if you guys want to go watch that on the channel, it's pretty cool. Um, but uh, moving on, in this tank, this is a 22 by 17 by 24 and it houses Dendrobates tinctorius vanessa. Um, pretty standard when it comes to my tinctorius tanks. Um, this one does have quite a few bromeliads. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep all those in there. I'm surprised I actually still have all those bromeliads in there. Uh, normally in the Tinctorious tanks, 
I start out with a bunch of bromeliads to take up space and then as the vines and everything take over um, I do tend to remove them because they don't really use them for breeding or anything. They do hang out in them and use the water supply. Um, but yeah, nothing too special in this tank. There's some Begonia Lita, Marcravia Umbellata, Marcravia Surname, Marcravia Centenesi. No, actually, there's no Centenesi. Um, there's Rectiflora. I do have a Begonia Blancii modeled in this tank and um, some low growing tropical moss. That's about it. Very simple. Um, and there are some, uh, there's also uh, Raphidophora in there. I forget which species though. Moving on to the right of that tank, we have the Dendrobates tinctorius yellowback tank. This is also a 22 by 17 by 24. I should just say it right now. The smaller tanks are 22 by 17 by 24, and the larger tanks are 44 by 17 by 24. Um, and that's inches for all you Europeans. Europeaners. <laughs> um, not centimeters. And uh, in this tank, same thing, uh, pretty standard. Uh, I've got some driftwood, some couple of bromeliads. Uh, I've got uh, Begonia Lita. I've got a huge um, Marcravius and Tennessee there. Um, that's probably four and a half inches across. There's some Rectiflora in there, and then there's also some Umbellata. Um, and now I'll do the back wall or the front facing wall, I should say. Uh, in this tank, we've got some, oh, I don't know why my gimbal just did that. I still don't really know what I'm doing with cameras or equipment, but I have it. <laughs> um, this is the old drip wall tank. Um, it's no longer a drip wall. I haven't used the drip in over a year. It was just making everything too wet and plants were not doing well. I failed. Um, if I would have did some more planning on how I wanted a water system or a little stream in there, it would have worked, but having it just on the ground and using orchids, it was just too wet. Everything was too soaked. So, um, But uh, this houses some Dendrobates tinctorius froglets. Uh, I've got some uh, Brazilian yellowheads in here. But um, yeah, this is a pretty simple tank. This is my <laughs> uh, Peperomi amarginella uh, source. There's just a load of it in there. And um, that's what I use to supply all the other tanks. Um, there's a couple of bromeliads and some Begonia Lita. I forget what this plant on the right is. Uh, maybe lemon ginger plant or something like that. Spiral staircase lemon ginger plant. Something like that. I don't really know. Um, and there's some Marcaria small round and some other weird vines in there. Uh, I think I have some Umbellata red in there as well. Moving to the right of that. This is the Dendrobates Tinctorius Kotari tank. Um, you guys have seen on the channel multiple times. Haven't done anything to this tank besides I added the uh, Lepanthes Gargoyla uh, orchid. You can see it kind of hanging down. Um, the Begon or the uh, Biophytum sensitivum is doing really well in this tank. Uh, it started from just a little seedling. Margravia is going crazy. I've got some adult growth. Um, the moss is doing really well. I use this tank for a lot of my uh, other tanks for moss. Um, I just pull moss from it and literally like two to three weeks later the moss is uh, replenished. So um, it grows extremely well in this tank as you can see. And there's a little pond area, stream area, whatever you want to call it in the front. To the right of that, this is the Dendrobates tinctorius green sipalawini tank, which is extremely green, um, mainly with ficus pamilla quercifolia, uh, or the oak leaf ficus, whatever you want to call it. Um, there is just an unbelievable amount in this tank. Um, there's also a lot of Marcravia rectiflora and a lot of Peperomia serpens. And something else I can't think of but yeah there's just a lot of green vines and a lot of moss um, I mean the coconut huts are completely covered in moss so um, some people really like the this tank to me it's overgrown like hell with the 
ficus. I hate ficus, and I no longer use <laughs> I try to not use it in any of my tanks because um, it just takes over, and I do not like it. So um, that's the green Cipollowini tank. And in here, we've got some more Dendrobates Tinctorious froglets. I've got Katari and Yellowbacks in here. Um, I built this tank about a year ago. It was in June when I built this one. Um, grew in pretty nice, though. I've got um, lots of Philodendron Varicosum growing. I'm um, growing really well, too. And this is the Varicosum Mini. But um, some of these leaves are huge. This is a pretty big one. For a mini, um, it's a really big leaf. But uh, pretty simple tank. Uh, just got some wood, an orchid, some marcravia, and some moss. So you guys know the deal. Um, to the right of that, we have my Ufaga Yellow Lamani tank, um, which is just booming with orchids. I mean, sorry, not orchids. What am I talking about? Bromeliads. There's just a ton of bromeliads in here. Um, they're raising three froglets right now. Um, I may remove some of these smaller bromeliads because they're not using them. And it's just getting a little crowded, so I'll probably go through that and clear, clean it up a bit. But, uh, yeah, it's just a, a very simple tank, but I really like the way it looks. Um, it's literally like a, just a jungle in there. Um, but it's not so overgrown that it's like not pleasing to the eye so i still do like that tank uh, it just needs a little cleaning up in my opinion to the right of that we have the old dendrobates leucamellus fine spot or fine spot leucamellus whatever you want to call them um, this is their old tank it's half broken down a um, bunch of the cork bark was falling apart i didn't build this tank like i didn't do the hardscape on this tank i actually bought this this is basically a second hand tank um, the hardscape was already done. I just replanted it and did some stuff to it, but um, I hate cork bark and for this reason <laughs> Is that it falls apart. So um, all the cork bark fell apart in this tank So I kind of tore it down halfway and then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna wait to do this one on the channel I'll tear it down and redo it on the channel to have some content um, So you guys will be seeing that one with me Moving on to the right wall this is another uh, just Tinctorious froglet tank. It's got some Vanessa, some Yellowback, some Katari, uh, some Fine Spot Lukes. But uh, yeah, I haven't really planted this one yet. It's really just got leaf litter and some moss, uh, a couple little lines. But um, oh, there's also uh, what is that? Uh, Philodendron Lincoln Park in there. And there's another Philodendron too. I can't think of the name right now. Grizzelia maybe? Philodendron griselia, I think, something like that. Um, I don't really like the way that one grows, the griselia. But, um, yeah, just a, a very simple tank. Again, um, for froglets right now, um, possibly will be a Azurius tank. Um, so we'll see how that goes. To the right of that, we've got the Dendrobates tinctorius um, Brazilian yellowhead tank. And... Another simple tank, um, there's some wood. I'm actually gonna remove some of the bromeliads in here too. They keep laying the eggs on the bromeliads. I don't know why. Um, they think they're like pomelio or something, but yeah, they, they <laughs> there's two Petri dishes in there, two coconut huts. They rarely use them. They're always using the either the leaf litter to lay the eggs or the bromeliads, and I just don't understand why. Um, I may try and see if they like plastic Petri dishes because I switched over to glass and Seems like some of the frogs don't, take some, it's taking them a while to get used to it. I don't know if it's like because it's cold or something, but um, I may try plastic ones for them, see if they like those better. But um, personally, I like the glass. It's nice. I feel fancy. But uh, yeah, they're breeding for me now. Um, I've got some froglets and some tadpoles, so I'm excited to have those going in the room again. Uh, very, very cool frogs, and if you're a tinctorious person, I think they're a must-have. So over here, this is uh, another, this is the second big tank we've seen in the, in the tour so far. This is the 44 by 17 by 24 blue histrionica tank. Um, again, has some pretty cool plants in here. Um, I've been keeping it pretty simple with my bromeliad layouts lately. Um, you know, one to two species and kind of, I kind of really like just like the green 
simple green or like you know some sort of veining in the leaves but like i don't i haven't been going for like the crazy reds and pinks and like you know just the like some of the vermilions out there are nuts um i'm really kind of digging this like naturalistic simple green thing that you would think you'd see in the wild um, or in the jungle so um yeah there's some cool orchids in this tank uh, i've got the vresia the bromeliads i'm using are uh, these are all vresia fenestralis and um i've got a monolina down there that grew from a seedling and it's pretty big now um we've got some restrepia orchids lots of Marcravius and tennessee i'm waiting for it to really take off it's starting to grow right now so it should take off here soon um that philodendron in the middle there is a an undescribed species or un, unknown species i don't know it's a philodendron but i'm not exactly sure what it is um and mike from glass box tropicals did not know either that's how he got it, it was an undescribed species uh we've got some cebu blue in there um or cebu blue i don't know exactly how you pronounce it uh, there's a nice big stellus down there in the, in the bottom left corner. Um, what else? We have a couple other small stelluses. We have Plurothalus alani. Um, there's Lepanthes fimbriata, Zotrophian griffin, Dryadella cristata. Quite a few orchids in this tank. Um, little water feature in the front. There's some water circulating through there um, just to keep some sort of water flow. Um, okay, so that's the end of the bottom row, and now we're going to go up to the top row. So, in this tank, you guys just saw this on the most recent montage video. This is currently my Ufaga Histrionica Anchicaia tank. Um, since the montage, I've not done anything to this, besides I added two little uh, Lepanthes Caladicti and Cup Leaf. Uh, orchids. Other than that, it is the same as the montage video, but for you guys who haven't seen the montage, um, or any of the How to Build Your Background Like a Pro video series, that's all this tank here. Um, there is Vresia hieroglyphica, those are the striper milliads, and then the solid green one is the Neoregilia malibu, and then the little red ones are Neoregilia zo. But uh, there's some orchids, some philodendron varicosa mini, lots of Marcravias. There's Marcravia thin, Marcravia centenisi, Marcravia rectifolia, or sorry, Marcravia rectif rectiflora. Um, it's it's 2:20 in the morning, so <laughs> just so you guys know, I may make some mistakes here. Got some other orchids. We got some I don't know, um, some Bulbophyllum. Uh, t -t 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 what else? There's some Stellis. There is lots of uh, Microgramma in this tank and Peperomia marginella. Some really cool plants in there. And uh, I recently moved the Anchicaia in this tank um, just because they weren't doing anything in the other tank and the Bahia Solano that were in here weren't doing anything. So I said, you know what? I'm going to switch their tanks up, see if that gets some sort of little trigger going. This is the, one of my, well, I guess my only Dendrobates is areas probable pair right now. Um, they, I've seen some cording, but no eggs or anything yet. So there used to be another really big bromeliad in there, but it was just taking up too much space. So I took it out. I may end up taking out this other one too, this uh, Vresia Nova that's on the, the right. It just takes up too much room and they're not going to use it. So I want to open it up a bit. I'll probably remove that, which is going to be not fun because the root systems on that on the Varesia get pretty intense so that's that tank really simple nothing special of that um this is the old Anchicaia tank which now houses the Ufaga Histrionica Bahia Solana um haven't changed much in this tank either uh same bromeliads and which I may end up switching out some of these bromeliads for Neoregilia Malibu um some of these little ones I just don't think they're going to use so um I will probably switch it out, but I do really like the moss growth I'm getting in this tank. Uh, it's really, really nice. And the background just looks really cool with it. So really happy with this tank as a whole. And I, oh, I did add the, a little uh, Caledictian. 
<laughs> Lepanthes caledictin. If you guys can't tell, Lepanthes caledictin is my favorite orchid. I've been using it like crazy lately. <sighs> Moving on to the back wall on the top row, we've got in the top right tank, the Ufaga sylvatica San Lorenzo. Um, I have not done anything to this tank in quite a while. They're very happy in it, breeding like crazy. And um, I've got lots of babies from them. Uh, I did get a Biophytum sensitivum shoot up out of nowhere in this tank. I had, a, I had a Biophytum sensitivum in that tank, maybe in 2014, maybe 2015, I don't know. But I removed it a long time ago. It got too big and I put it in the 180 gallon. And uh, yeah, it sh a seedling shot up out of nowhere. And then also that little fern shot up out of nowhere too. So um, cool, you know, nature and stuff. Uh, in this tank, this is the Ufaga Histrionica Bullseye tank. Uh, I haven't made any changes to it since the last tour. I don't think. I think I might have added some moss or something, but um, it's still the same. Um, really cool frogs, really simple tank, and it's really effective, and the frogs do really well in there. So. Haven't made any changes to that. And this tank here, this is the Ufaga Pamilio Bastimentos tank. Same as the bullseye, haven't made any changes to it. Um, I've got lots of babies running around in there. Uh, something interesting, my male um, Bastimentos, it's like losing its spots. It's getting really old and some of the spots are like starting to disappear, which is kind of cool. Um, but I got a photo, I'll, I'll insert it here. So, um, yeah, their tank's still exactly the same as it was in the last tour. As well as this tank, this is the Ufaga Pamilio Escudo tank. It is identical to how it was, well, I'm sure there's some growth, but um, I haven't made any changes to it since the last tour. And I'm proud to say that I am getting babies again, finally, after about a year of not having a female. I am getting babies again, which is terrific. To the left of that, we have another Pamilio tank. These are Ufaga Pamilio Rio Calubre. Um, I think since the tour, the last tour, I did change it a little bit. I took out a big bromeliad that was in the center. I'm not sure if that was in the last tour or not, but um, I did remove a big bromeliad there. It was kind of clogging the tank and just wasn't visually aesthetic and also was hard to access. So um, yeah, they're breathing like crazy right now, which is cool. And that's what everybody likes. <laughs> uh, here we've got uh, another Pamilio tank, Ufaga Pamilio Unknown Locale Bastimentos, which these are a crowd favorite. Um, people love these frogs. I cannot seem to hold on to them. And people line up, basically are messaging me to, to get in line because they want them. Um, they're really, really cool Bastimentos. I think they're cooler than Red Frog Beach. Uh, a lot of the red, not all, but a lot of the red frog, red frog beach you see, I think look like crap. Um, these ones are, are beautiful. Same thing, I removed a big bromelia that was in the center there. Like I said, I don't remember if that was in the last tour or not. And over here, uh, this is on the right, the Ufaga Pamilio Salarte tank. I have not made any changes to that since the last tour, I don't believe. Um, but I'm really happy with this tank. Lots of moss growth. Um, Mark Ravia is going kind of wild in it up there in the top right corner. They're breeding very well in that tank. So um, yeah, they took a little while to get back on track after the move coming out here last year, but um, you know, they're cranking them out. I just seem to get about three to four every three to four months. So um, that's really good for Pamelia. Well, for just a 1.1. Um, in this tank, this is another Dendrobates Tinctorius. Um, just froglet tank right now. Nothing special to this tank. It's still growing in. The moss is starting to grow a bit on the Hyger lawn. Um, the Margravia is starting to really creep up the sides there. I need to kind of cut and split it so it'll grow better. Um, or grow, I guess, send out more runners. But um, should be a really cool tank when that's all grown in. And uh, this is the tank that I built on the channel um, in April. It's the last 44 by 17 by 24. Um, this is what houses the fine spot Lucamellus right now. 
they hadn't bred in their old tank for a while um you know a few months and then i threw them in this tank and they started breeding like crazy so i'm getting like you know five to seven eggs every five to seven days so i don't know if i'm gonna keep them in there and just i may uh this is a bigger tank and see how they do in a group you know maybe like a 1.4 or 2.5 or something like that um i don't know i, I don't know how lucamellas go if they need i know pamilio you want low males and high females but um i don't remember i know in tinks you want more males but we'll see i don't know <laughs> I, i'm gonna try some groups i got some froggets i may hold back and uh you know get a little group in this tank because uh, they do like the water feature and they've been calling like crazy so it might be a nice little display tank you know i've got the terribilis below them who have a similar call and then i may have the lucamellus you know up here which is pretty cool but um this tank is definitely one of my favorites as a whole um, it's got some really really awesome plants in there um, some really cool philodendrons some really cool orchids and um, the moss growth is really cool and I do I think the water feature was really successful in this one um, there's the little pond area and it does run back to like a little stream here you can kind of see the little like curved shaped stream and that whole drip spot I think just it just works really well um, really pleased with this tank as a whole so um, yeah definitely one of my favorites so I'm very happy with this uh, I'm very happy with the frog room uh, now I can just kind of sit back and enjoy um, I've got that Lucamella's tank to redo and you know I'm sure I'm gonna find some other stuff to do um, make some more videos make some more content uh, make some more tanks. I do want to do like a really cool tree frog um, tree frog tank like a wet chamber, rain chamber, dry chamber, all in one type of thing really cool like ecosystem I want to do that um, that'll be in the future. I've talked about that on some of my live streams on Instagram but uh, yeah this is this is the frog room um, it's, it's done <laughs> and I'm happy about it. You know I've put a lot of work in this the past two years and uh, it's kind of all come to uh, come to a close here and uh, yeah I'm excited to just really focus on breeding and uh, you know pairing up certain animals that aren't paired up yet um, I do have my tadpoles over here the water I have the, uh, the filter off right now because it makes noise like crazy and you guys would get annoyed on the mic so as if the fans weren't enough but yeah uh that's gonna do it for this that's the frog portion of the video um or the tour portion of the video so hope you guys enjoyed and uh stay tuned for more content goldberg out